Hi, I'm Gio Davin, and in this video we're actually going to start working in Unreal Editor for Unreal Tournament 3. So, as you can see here, I have got the Shock Rifle package open. Looking at, well, hopefully, what it says in here. The anims and your anim set, your effects, we're not going to touch them for a long time. Your materials, your meshes, and particles. Now, what you should try to do, if you can, is actually get everything you need for your weapon in your own package. Now, I'm not going to do this because, one for one thing, um, not very good with the particles at the moment and the effects either. So, we'll leave that out for the moment. We'll just use, eventually when we get onto the code, we'll use that for the sh stuff from the shock rifle. Now, this should work, well, it's worked so far for me, so let's just get on with it. And where, where, where would I start? Well, the first thing I do when starting a new package is actually importing the textures. Now, you might ask, well, why is this? So, well, the simple reason is that that actually takes a long time. Now, as you can see here, I clicked on File, went on to Import. Sometimes it goes to the right place, sometimes it doesn't. Now, I'm just going to go down to my package where I've got my maps. Now, as you can see here, I've got my uh, Geogun spec norm diff. Now, by rights, I don't think I've done it any other way. No, you really should name these to, to your weapons. Now, obviously, when I've done these, I was just going to do the one gun, and in fact, I will eventually get round to doing the second one, but let's just stick with these at the moment. Notice the naming conventions. T for texture, WP for weapon, obviously the name of the weapon, and then diff for the diff diffuse, normal, and specular. Uh, we've got, you can do these all in a one but uh, let's just do this one at a time. Now, as soon as you, you go to import, it'll ask you for a package name. Now, obviously, we don't want to start messing with the shock rifle, so we'll just put in our package name, Geo Shock. Oh, probably, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been living in this country too long. There we go. Now, what group do we want to call it? Well, I deviate slightly from the epic setup where I put my textures in a separate texture group. Okay, the reason for this is is basically my workflow because when you start getting onto things like the characters and quite possibly the vehicles, you're going to have a lot more textures and a lot more material so it starts to get a little bit cluttered. Okay. That's the reason for that. Now what do we need to do here? Click on OK? Well not yet. One of the main things that you're going to face is this little thing, the LOD group. Now, this is very, very important. Now, as you can see, I clicked on the drop down to get the correct setting. Otherwise, you get lots of errors, things won't show proper, and you'll start pulling your hair out, and you might not know why. So, this is when things don't quite look right, and you think you've done everything else right, check this. Now, we'll, we'll have another look at this in a, in a minute because of a little problem that comes up. Right, what you need, diffuse, diffuse texture, just goes texture group weapon. Click OK, and it does absolutely nothing. Well, wrong. It will do something in a minute. There you go. Goes all funny. And there we go. You like that? Well, I can't see anything. Well, that's because it just loads it in. And as you can see here, we've got the WP Geoshock package. Now, oh, look at that lovely texture. Fantastic, isn't it? So what we can do now to make things a little bit easier, just select that group. Now we'll go on to import again. All right, this time we're going to import the normal. Now, you see the group's gone automatic to texture this time. So down to the LOD group, weapon normal, click OK, give it 10 minutes. <laughs> OK, I'm be, being a bit silly here, but when you start input, these are not too bad because they're only textures that are 1024 by 1024. When you start importing larger textures, it takes longer. 
Right, next one we want is a specular. Now obviously you can start doing emissives and all the rest. So anything that is not oh, oh, it's wrong one, not a normal map, not a specular map, goes on to the normal the uh, texture group weapon. Anything else? Well, the specular and the normals have their own, but anything else just goes into the not what well, I keep saying normal, not to get mixed up with the normal map, but the standard weapon group. Now, this is a little thing you're going to have to watch out for. It's something that an old friend of mine, Disc Mage, pointed out to me and asked me to remind people in, when I do the videos. Is once you've imported your normal map, double click it and you'll get the texture property windows. Now you look at this and you think, yeah, that's okay, that's fine. But when you go down, look at the LOD group, it's gone back to texture group world. Now all you have to do is go back, it doesn't matter whether it's a weapon, a character or a vehicle, if it's a normal map, you have to reset it. So we reset it to normal weapon normal map, close, and that's it. Happy with that. Alright, next thing we need to do is set up the material. Yes, yeah, so we've not imported the mesh yet, but we're going to set up the material because once I start working with the mesh, I want to have everything set up it ready for it. So all we have to do now is right click in this open space and you get this list. Now we just go for a new material. Now we want it in a separate group so we'll just call that materials. Now what name are we going to put it? Well if you look at Geo's magic list yet again it's not a great big list for the, for the weapons but it all helps. Saves you getting typos later. Just copy back into the editor paste that in, go OK, it's not fully loaded, don't know why it keeps on doing this to me, but uh, if now, now it should now fully load, yeah, OK, we're fine there, now we get this, oh you can't see a lot there, it's just a black ball because there's nothing on there, alright, so what do we do now, oh, to make a very basic material, we just go down here and go click on texture sample and drag it across. Now you can see it's black there. Now why is it black? Because we don't have an actual texture selected. So all we have to do, now you can do this beforehand but I'm just doing this to show you. Okay. Click on there, make sure that texture is selected. Go down here, texture where it says none, you've got the little arrow, use current select selection in browser there you go and you get a little thumbnail like that now obviously we need three of these so there's one there's another one now as you can see it's already it's picked up on the one that was already selected so I picked in a three now if you've never done this before if you hold the control if you select one of these thumbnails hold control and then with the left mouse you can move them up and down Okay, so we just get this some sort of little bit of order. So it's all nice ranked up, nice and pretty. So how do we change these? Well, exactly as I just did before. All right, select it in the generic browser. Now you see me moving my windows about here a little bit. There we go, normal. That's the way we want that. Now go for the specular. There we go, select that back into the materials window. That one selected. There we go, onto the spec. Now, how do we get this all to join up? Well, very simple. Left click on here, hold the mouse key down, and drag the little line to the diffuse, because that's the diffuse texture. Now, you can see there, yeah, it's applied. Same again with the specular. Hold on to the black one, drag across to the specular. There we go, we see any difference? Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit shiny there. Now again for the normal map, put that onto the normal. And you see a slight, I know it's not very good because the normal 
my texture doesn't do work very well in this but you can just about see how the, the normal maps applied now if you look at the other materials made by epic you'll see lots more in there and to actually to go through this you'd probably need about 10 hours of tutorials just to go through half of this stuff and how you can use it so a lot of it is look at the epic stuff play around with it yourself and see what sort of effects you can get okay very very simple uh, obviously you can go down here physics materials two-sided also all sorts of stuff okay now I'm just going to click on the close button here because then you get this little message come up would you like to apply apply changes to this area you like that? yeah because obviously that's what we want all right since I've reinstalled well since I had a hard drive meltdown and reinstalled UT I keep on getting these errors I don't know why I'm not that good at things like that so all right this is you can see here all right textures materials package okay now you see, if I click off that if I click on say this one down here don't worry about what that is that's some of my other work now uh, you can see that's dark black that's gray now that normally means it's not fully loaded now if you're not too sure right click fully load and it's still not doing it oh well never mind uh, we'll get there eventually right next thing we need to do is actually well what's all that's left well obviously the mesh so we'll go to import the meshes now where's my meshes all my meshes are in this folder as you can see there's a lot of meshes in there which is why the naming convention comes in again so don't worry about those all right geo skeleton mesh or skeletile mesh WP GeoShock first person and third person yes you need we'll just click both of them says so messing around all right let's just go mesh as our group make sure I spell it correctly and click all now if you follow my just click on that to show them if you follow my tutorials you'll notice I've used the exact same mesh and rig for both the fir first and the third person meshes okay now obviously when you're doing yours you'll want the first person one to be up somewhere around 6,000 polys and the third person one maybe say about two to three maximum the first person I've, I've seen some of the epic stuff that goes up to 12,000 but whatever you want to do but don't just put stuff in there for, for the hell of it okay all right next thing we need to do is obviously start playing around with this lot so right cl double click on it yeah so I have been trying playing with that but it didn't work okay all right first thing we need to do is apply a material because uh, although that's uh, that the default looks okay <laughs> but uh, no I'm, I'm being silly again right just pull this over here so we can actually see what we're doing I'll get back to the generic browser click on the materials select he said select that material you can see how it gets highlighted come in here and yet again use current selection in browser and then there we go all dandy now what else do we need to do in here well one of the things that a lot of people forget and I'll harp on about it until I go blue in the face is adding your sockets okay now sockets is where your effects get applied so they don't apply to they don't apply them to the bones I'm not too sure why but that's the way epic do it so it's the way we're going to do it so all you have to do is like I said like I showed select on the mesh down to the socket manager this window comes open new socket where the bone name that you want to apply the socket to now if you remember I made a bone called shock fire you go yep okay you're like ah what name do we get it yep back to our super list 
Muzzle flash socket, copy, back in here, paste, click OK. Now if you see here, you see it there, that's the one. X pointing forward, that's the direction of the effect. Now for the, the shock rifle, that has two sockets. Now which one it uses the most, I'm not sure, but we're just going to apply a second one. As you can see, just following on, I know I'm not commentating on everything I'm doing here. Right, the other one is the MF. Why they've done this, mm, don't know. I've given up trying to second guess them at times. So I'll just paste that in there, click OK. Now you like that? Well, they're both in the same place. Now if you want to move these things, now obviously you've got your translate, you've got your rotate, and you've got your delete. Yeah, so all we're going to do is translate or move the MF socket a little bit to the side so you can see how to do this. Now as you can see, the green, at the Y axis, when I hold my mouse over it, it goes yellow. That means it's the one that's selected. Now I hold the left mouse button down and move slightly to the left. Now obviously if you do it that way and you can do it that way, Okay, that's that's all that takes. Uh, you can type the things in here, there, but I've all I found it's always best to do it actually on screen here. All right, that's all we need that for. Here's me just panning around, making sure that's fine, and that's that one done. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. All right, believe it or not, we have to do this yet again for the third person. Now I done one for my mod last night and I thought yeah yeah all done and guess what I forgot to do? You're quite right I forgot to add the sockets on my third person mesh. Now as you can see there I've just applied as I just done with the first weapon just applied the material as you can see it shows up fine now we go into the socket manager again, add a new one, shock fire, OK. Now it I still had that saved, well it was still in the uh, the memory. So a new one, fire, OK. Now I'm going to have to go back and copy and paste this because if I try and type this I'll spell it wrong as I normally do which is why I have these lovely little files. Saves me getting really embarrassed. OK, now that's fine. Let's just double check there. Again, yeah, MF to the side, muzzle flash on the tip of the barrel. That's fine. That works for me. Now, one last thing that we have to do for this package before we can actually start coding, and that's the animations. Now I'm not going to put animations on the third person, which you can do. We'll go into that at a later date. I'm just going to do it for the first person. So what we do now is in an open space here, right click again and go on to new anim set. Not the anim tree, the anim set. Right, give it a group name. Have a guess. Anims. That's the one. Now what do we want to call this? Uh, yet again, there we go, naming conventions. You're going to get bored of me saying things like this by, by the time you've watched all these videos I'm doing, but at least you might get it into your heads. Right, KWP GL Shock. Smashing. Yeah, 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 you keep telling us that. It's probably because I haven't load saved it. Yeah, yeah, more mistakes. Now, unfortunately, one of the things that happens is that if it's not been done before, you will get this, the old uh, super duper guy. Now, don't worry about that. I'll show you how to change that right now. Let's see if it will pick it up. Now, if you see here, well, one way to do it is click on that. So I have your, your mess selected. Go on there. And there you go. Whee! We've got our gun there. Fantastic. But as you can see, we haven't got any anims. 
Now where do these come from? Now remember I exported an anim set. Now this is what this is how we get it in. Import PSA. There we go, import PSA and that is what we saved out on in the maps tutorial. Yeah? The uh, KWP GeoShock PSA. Just select that. OK. And wham! Straight in there. All six animations. Now if you're not too sure that's all gone correct, all we do is... Oh, look! It moved. Click down here and you see it being played. And again. And again. Check the put down. There we go. There we go. There we go. Smashing. Fire. Uh, well, hang on a minute. What went wrong there? What's not it's doing? Well, what it's not doing is this block bit, the slide, is not moving back. And the reason for that is in, if you look down in the properties, the anim set, it has be anim, anim rotation only ticked. This is a default setting. Now, it's something you need for the characters and quite possibly for the vehicles, but for the weapons, we don't. So we take the tick out of there. Now, let's see, play this. Do you see that? Yay! Now we actually get a translation. And that's what you have to watch for. Okay, it's one of those little things that if you, if you don't know about it, it can, well, yeah, that's why I'm a bit bolder than what I used to be. <laughs> okay, now that, believe it or not, is us done. Well, not quite, because obviously we have to save it. Now, I could go on there, but I'm not going to, for the reason it might not save it where I want. So, save as. Yeah, fully load it. Go on, give it a chance. Now, this is what can happen. It could end up saving it where it was last at. So, what we'll go to is GeoDav, Documents, My Games, UT Game, Unpublished custom weapons. Now, if you haven't, if you look in here, well, unpublished, cut PC. By default, when you first start the editor up or when you install the game, you will get custom cars, which is the characters, and custom maps. Now, if you haven't got custom weapons, just make a new new folder, name it like that, and then we can save our package in there. And there we go. Can't say it, check. Oh dear. There's something going wrong here. Anyway, that's what... Sh obviously, the saving should be uh, better. Uh, do you want to... Uh, do you want to... I'm just... Okay, we've got some problems there, but uh, anyway, I'll sort that out. And if necessary, I will remake this and then everything should be OK for us to go on to the coding. OK, so we'll leave it at that and I'll see you later. Bye bye.